So welcome everybody. I'm so glad that we're getting to connect this Sunday. You now we've got people in different time zones. Um, so I won't say which part of Sunday, but uh, I am thrilled that we have Sumati Sparks with us this uh, today to talk about the ins and outs of internal condoms. For those of you who might be meeting me for the first time, my name is Caroline Carrington. I'm a certified Neo Tantra educator who swims in all sorts of subcultures, including polyamory, kink, classical Tantra, and Bhakti Yoga. And I'm passionate about getting people out of their heads and into their bodies to connect more deeply with themselves their partner or partners, and the divine. Uh, I'm going to let Simati introduce herself in a moment, but I first, I want to share a little bit uh, about my connection to Simati. And at the, at the beginning of this intense time that we are all living through right now, she invited me to a check-in call once a week and it has literally been like a lifeline for me she's incredibly wise and while we share a number of different communities together um, I will always remember very fondly running into you Simati at Amas the hugging saint some of you might know and I I just love that we have this shared um you know, love for consciousness and diving deeper into, oh, wonderful, diving deeper into, um, you know, our spiritual practice. So I am, I remember in one of these calls asking you, like, we'll talk more about my lack of experience with female condoms or internal condoms, as we are calling them, so that we're being more inclusive. Um, but sort of the premise for this evening is that instead of me just getting all of Sumati's expert tips, I thought all of us could be included in the conversation. And I'm really delighted that you've said yes and that you're here to share uh, your wisdom with us. Welcome. Thank you, Caroline. Yes, I've really enjoyed our weekly what started out as like accountability buddies turned out to be this incredible kind of co-counseling, deep friendship, just love, virtual love relationship. <laughs> and we both moved away from the Bay Area and we've stayed connected over the miracle of Zoom. <laughs> so thank you so much for inviting me to your Patreon. I'm really honored to be here. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm Sumati Sparks, and yes, my name Sumati was given to me by Ama or Mata Amritananda Mai, the great saint from Kerala, India, and it means pure essence. So it gives me something to live up to. And um, I am an open relationship and polyamory educator and coach, and I help people create successful, consensual, ethical, non-monogamous love and intimate connections. I've been practicing ethical non-monogamy myself for over 25 years and coaching others for 20 years. And I'm passionate about helping people learn to navigate multiple romantic relationships while staying in sovereign connection with themselves and their spirit, and also helping people find compatible polyamorous partners to date. So... You know, I didn't know about that. I actually, the particular patron is not joining us tonight, but they were actually asked, one of my patrons was saying, I've recently got out of a relationship. How do I find someone? And I was like, I am, that is not my wheelhouse. So now I know I can send them to you. That's good to know. <laughs> Thank you, Simati. So I, you and I talked in advance about uh, what, a little bit about what you were going to share oh and we having a question already which I love Naomi was saying could you repeat that so can you go over 
again, uh, just a little bit about yourself. My whole bio? Um, Repeat. Helping people retain sovereign. Oh, that part? Okay. Yeah, that part. So, yes. So, I like to, so I'm passionate about helping people navigate multiple relationships while staying in connection with their, their self. Their, I call it sovereignty, your sovereign self. So you're not losing yourself with all this external energy with other people. You're staying in connection with self and your spirit. And I, I really infuse all my teaching with spirituality and with knowing who we really are, that we are infinite love, that we are bigger than our feelings. So I bring us all back to that energy. I, I see Naomi giving me the heart symbol. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for asking. Mm. So yeah, that's actually great. You've modeled beautifully that you are welcome um, in the first portion. If you have any questions, um, you know, as Simati is presenting, I'm going to be asking questions too. But if you have any, please drop them in the chat for now and we'll be opening it up, um, you know, sort of for the last half hour for more specific questions from you, you know, you the participants. Uh, but we want to hear a little bit about, I'm so excited to learn about why Sumati thinks that the internal condom can actually be even better, and I'm assuming better means more pleasurable, um, for people involved <laughs> versus the, you know, the, what did you call it? The OG I call it the OG, the original condom. <laughs> Well, it's interesting, Simati, because I've been having queer sex with people of all genders for years. And for me, part of how this conversation came up was um, I have a new sweetie in my life. And to me, it's just always, almost always standard that I use condoms with partners, at least in the beginning. Um, and you know, for many people who've been in long-term relationships, especially if they were monogamous, they just might not have had as much practice with regular condoms. Um, and like, for me, while I've got plenty of practice with regular condoms, my only experience with a female condom, I'm gonna get kind of vulnerable here, is one night at a play party that I was running in Oakland, um, I had another sex educator, yeah, I had another sex educator like do a demo on me <laughs> to show how it was put in, but I was being demoed on so I couldn't see all the, <laughs> you know, I couldn't see exactly what was happening. And it's been a few years and I may want to try those with my new sweetie. Um, and Yes, what did you what did you say in the in the ad for this that you're the self-proclaimed expert on internal condoms, which I yes, love. Yes. So. I've been using them for a long time. And so um, I always ask the men that I've been with how it was for them and if, if, feel, if they prefer it over a regular male condom. And they have always, and there might be two exceptions, but all but two have said, yes, it's much better than a male condom, or I felt like we weren't using anything. Mm. Sorry, that's already, because that's the big thing about the OG condoms, right? Yeah, and the only ones that didn't like it one time, they just didn't like the visual of it, you know, because they like the visual of seeing the yoni with nothing on it was a big turn on for them. So having having this thing coming out of the yoni <laughs> spoiled their visual turn on and then another man said that he could feel the internal ring but you can actually take that out i just didn't know that at the time there's an internal ring that goes inside if you've ever used a diaphragm it's kind of like that where there's two rings on the female condom there's one on the outside that keeps it from falling into the vagina and then there's another ring um, inside that you kind of bend it's very flexible rubbery and you bend it and you put it up under your pubic bone and it opens up there like a diaphragm used to when we used those back in the day so that holds it in place but if the man is hitting that internal ring just because of the shape of his penis or the way you two fit together um, 
you can take that out and just be a little more mindful about it possibly coming off. But the good news is when it comes off, it stays stuck to the penis. So penis goes inside and then penis comes out and the condom goes with it. <laughs> oh, that's great. So then it ends up kind of looking like a regular condom as it comes out, right? So you're not gonna like, it's not like a regular condom where it fall, you know, goes inside you. I've had regular condoms, like I couldn't even find them inside me. I, I remember once my boyfriend and I were using a hotel and we shook the sheets out. We looked everywhere. We could not find this condom. And I went to the doctor and I go, I think it might be inside me because we looked everywhere in the hotel room. <laughs> and she goes, no, it's not inside you. So we don't know where. <laughs> I love these personal stories that we put in. <laughs> yes. I, you know, I do my best to keep checking while I'm having sex yeah. if I'm using condoms. So, but you know, I have had with vigorous penetration. I've also had them kind of go missing in my yes. uni. Now you find them again, but yeah, it's good to laugh about these things sometimes. But I think the feet, so that's, so I found that there's about 12 reasons why it's superior to the OG condom. Um, and that's the first one is that when it falls off, it's usually stays stuck to the penis. So it doesn't fall off inside the woman. And so really the only um, danger is if you are, if the, the penis comes out all the way and then goes back in, it can go around to the side of the condom and go in the yoni or the ass around the side. So if there's a complete withdrawal, you just have to guide the penis back in and make sure it's going to the middle of the condom. But that would be the same thing if you withdrew using an OG condom because you would wanna feel it and make sure it's still on, you know, properly and that it's rolled up all the way. So, you know, there's an awareness of, no matter which kind of condom you're using, you have to stay aware of where it is, you know, so it's still working. <laughs> So that, this point specifically, and are we on, you started with one, is this still that, one? That's kind of one, yeah, I guess okay. we've already started with the 12. Okay, just double checking <laughs> that we went on two already, because I'm the number counter and keeper, so soon as you can <laughs> just share. But so that's actually why I've, I've, I felt, I like to be an expert in all things, especially sexual, but it's hard to be an expert if you've never done this something right you got to practice a little while right to become good at it and um that's my that's part of why I haven't tried because I'm very committed to safer sex but I'm just worried Simati that the person without us realizing it might miss and if you miss then there's no protection anymore right in terms of STIs miss in the way that i said where it goes underneath yeah underneath no. or over or just well, not like, getting in the right hole well no like i said you if there's a comp so when you start intercourse you're going to make sure that the penis it's a really big condom it lays down actually let me just start at the beginning here okay so so if you've never used it before I, if at all possible i recommend you having you know your sweetie or a really close friend read the instructions to you while you are using both hands. So you're okay. not like trying to hold the instructions. <laughs> right. Or you're looking down, trying to read it. Where, so somebody just read it out loud and you can kind of laugh and giggle together as you figure out how to put this thing in. Okay. But, but are you saying that the receiver is actually the one in general putting it inside themselves? Yes, correct. The person with the with the hole, <laughs> it, can, it can be used for anal sex too. So the person who's going to be receiving intercourse um, will be putting it inside their body. And so their lover can read the instructions to them while they're putting it in. And so here's, so I'm already going to go to one of the other things. You can count this as number two. Okay. So you can put the, the internal condom in, and I might sometimes call it the female condom too. You can put it in at any time. So the penis owner doesn't have to be hard because it, once it's in, it can just stay there and be ready for whenever the penis is hard, whenever you're ready to go. 
but that does depend on what kind of sexual activity you're engaging that's in true i was just going to say that like it kind of gets in the way of you know cunnilingus because it's laying down over the yoni you can actually move it aside and lick the yoni well you know while it's still in there it's very malleable and rubbery um, but usually you would put it in when you're not expecting to have you know feet in, for um, a yoni to be receiving oral sex so usually you would put it in when that's already happened or when that might happen after intercourse so you can put it in um, and still you know give fellatio you can put it in and still make out and kiss and cuddle and be mm -hmm. sensual and touch each other all over you can do all kinds of things and then when you're ready for intercourse it's already in okay so the the person receiving intercourse will put it in and then if you're putting it into a vagina it it um, kind of sticks out about an inch maybe half an inch to an inch it kind of hangs out of the yoni at first until the intercourse happens and then the intercourse pushes it in and makes it lay flat over the vulva so it's kind of covering the whole vulva once it's in use but what when it when you first put it in it's like this little baggie that's kind of hanging out of you so it feels kind of odd and awkward at first so it's like the opening of whichever orifice you're using it's like clinging onto it so it's not going to fall out but it needs something inside it to actually to, well, no, it's going to be in all the way. It's just that the outside, the little outside of it, the half an inch or so that's kind of hanging out of the orifice looks kind of funny and might feel a little funny. But then once intercourse happens, that outside part begins to lay flat down over the vulva. Okay, so it's completely covering the outside of the vagina. Okay. Okay, so that way... You know, well, we can get into some of the other reasons why that's great. But anyway, that's that's number two. Okay. And then we have a question which is related. Um, the person is asking, what about fingers? I love the language in here, or hands and vagina sex. Yep, yep. Oh, and I beg your pardon, we're getting kinkier by the minute here. And pussy spanking and toys. So <laughs> Yeah, in terms of other kinds of play, like when... Yeah, you... anything that you would do without a condom or, you know, you can do through the female condom. So you could certainly, if you don't want to have fingers directly in the yoni, you want a barrier for that too, then yes, you can put fingers into the female condom. Um, you know, you don't want to have a sharp nail like breaking it just like any condom, um, but certainly the pads of your fingers, you know. Um, toys can go in there and that's actually better because sometimes toys don't get cleaned as well as people think they've cleaned them and right. so that protects you from like getting bacterial infections or other things from toys that haven't been cleaned well and then sure you can definitely spank the outside especially once the condom is, is laying flat against the vulva you can definitely do some spanking there yeah mm. <laughs> all right i'm getting old i love my job <laughs> we get to talk about pussy spanking at work that's great and you were telling me to like take it easy at the beginning caroline <laughs> oh well you know now that the questions are getting me all riled up um but just and 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 i'm kind of doing my best to ask the dumb questions intentionally because like, I'm personally nervous about this because I'm not an expert. I only had the one demo. Now I'm hearing I have to be the one putting it in me. And da, da, da. So I think I'm hearing you say that you could use it for hand sex once it's in. You can use it for toys and for basically anything else you're inserting inside. Yes. Right. Um, but like... I've never used a diaphragm, believe it or not. <laughs> um, but like that, you would often put in sometimes even up to a few hours before. So could you put the internal condom in like long before? Yes. Okay. I have another personal story that's really sexy. Okay. So I was dating this guy who claimed to be a dom, but he'd just been really sweet and he had not really done anything dommy. <laughs> so I said, 
aren't you a dom? And he's like, oh yeah, but I don't, I don't do anything unless there's been a conversation and it's very consensual and we make sure that we're on the same page. And I'm like, okay, well you have my permission now <laughs> to do whatever. And he goes, okay, the next time we get together, I want you to be wearing a dress with no underwear and your female condom already in. <laughs> That's so hot. Okay, I love, um, excuse me. I don't know how so I'm gonna, I got like... dressed, I put it in and I was already there and I didn't know when it was gonna get used because it was up to him. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that story. That's made my evening much, much better. Um, but so you saying like it could be inserted half an hour, even an hour before play. Yes, yes. That's awesome. Yeah, okay. I mean, you, don't, you probably don't want to leave it in too long just because it uh, might be a little uncomfortable. And also, you know, the yoni is this very, the vagina, you know, it's a very... Um, you know, the pH balance, it's kind of a delicate ecosystem. And so you just don't want something hanging out in there for too long. <laughs> right. But I think but, even on occasion, an hour would be fine. But you know, 20 to 30 minutes is nothing. Yeah, right. Oh, what happens are, if you have, have to pee? <laughs> these are great questions. I have a yeah. follow up to that. In a I would think that you would take it out. And I have actually put the same one back in before before I've used it, you can put the same one back in if it's not been used. And by used, do you mean used for penetration Correct. or ejaculated in? Both. So before it's been used for any kind of penetration of a toy or a hand or a cock. Well, definitely if, if someone has ejaculated in it, you wouldn't want to put it back in right. for sure. <laughs> I guess you could take it out and put it back in if it's, only been used a little bit like let's say you just start having intercourse and you're like ah i'm so sorry but i really have to pee and i didn't realize it <laughs> then you could pull right. it out go pee and put it back in but if it's used too much it just it just it, it's a little harder to to get it back in because it, i don't know it's hard to explain it's just it's not really intended to be taking out and putting it in a lot but right. in the beginning i think it's okay to do that Okay, and I'm really not trying to get you off your 12 points, but um, this wonderful question about pee. Um, no, I'm not going to talk about water sports for the kinky people watching this. <laughs> but as a neotantric, I from, I won't get too technical, but I frequently have Amrita or what's often known as female ejaculation. And it can be quite forceful. So this is another thing where I'm like, well, how's that going to work if I, yeah, so how does. That's a really good question. I don't do that. So I don't know, but my guess would be that it would actually be le slightly less um, to clean up afterwards because it's going to, the condom is going to, is going to be covering the vaginal wall. And, and so the Amrita comes out from inside the vaginal wall. Is that correct? Yes. It, it's. Yeah, think like of it the near the urethra. G spot. Oh, but you're near the urethra. Okay, so it's not inside the vagina. It's not coming out from inside. Hang the on, vagina. I beg your pardon. Well, there's Skeen's glands that sit. I don't have my yoni puppet here, but um, sorry, let me just slow this down. I wasn't imagining I was doing anatomy today, but I can see how it would gather in the, because it fits like a ring over the yoni. And it will, stay, it will stay inside your vagina. So whether the Amrita is coming out from slightly outside the orifice of the vagina or whether right. it's coming out from slightly inside the orifice yeah. of the vagina, right. yeah. it's still going to be underneath the, the female condom. Right. So it's going to run back inside. Uh, most of it's going to run back inside the, the yoni. And um, some of it will seep out the sides, but it's not going to be as abrupt as if there's nothing there. Okay. So it'll be marginally less to clean up. So with, so some people like it spewing everywhere. That's awesome. And they get one of those splash pads and they put that down and they're like, yep, the more yep. the merrier. So <laughs> That's great. Like, let's have that. But if you weren't expecting to have sex and you right. have a female condom, it could make it a little cleaner for the space you're using. 
Right, a little bit less laundry. Yes. I always do loads of laundry. And yes, I'm one of those that carries her. Okay, and, and so while we're on that topic, it's also really good for when you're on your moon, when a woman is bleeding. Because um, what I used to do if I wanted to have sex, I don't bleed anymore. But when I did and I wanted to have sex when I was on my moon, I would put like, um, I'd get like a little sea sponge, like a piece of a sea sponge. And I'd put it in my yoni to absorb the blood. And then I'd put the female condom in over that. And we would have intercourse. And then I'd go to the bathroom and pull the, the thing out, the condom out take the sponge out, rinse it in the sink and put it back in. And there, the, the no blood has been seen the whole time. There's not a drop of blood that, that got seen by anybody. <laughs> I have I mean, to this see. may not be as true if you're like on your heaviest day, you know, if you're okay. like the one heavy, heavy day, but like, you know, one of the lighter days, mm. you just won't even see a drop of blood. That's amazing because I, I'm, I know this. I often get really horny during my period, but I tend to have a pretty heavy flow and then you can't feel very much. So this is a great solution. Yeah, but back to what we were talking about before. Yes, there is a learning curve, okay? So you do have to learn how to put it inside you and it does take a few times of practice, but it, the practice is really, really fun. So let me tell you about the practice because these are two things on my list. One is it can be very, very stimulating to put it in. So if I'm on my knees, okay, so imagine I'm on my knees and I'm reaching into my yoni and I'm, you know, pushing it up under the pubic bone. I'm kind of like rubbing against my G spot as I'm doing it. And I'm also relaxing my yoni so I can reach in and put this thing in and I'm preparing myself. Can I say the F word here? <laughs> You can on my okay. channel, you can. I'm preparing myself for a good fucking, right? So right. the whole thing is just very exciting. And so like just you know, I'm reaching in, I'm relaxing, I'm pushing my juice, but I'm reaching under the pubic bone, I'm pushing it in. And just the whole thing is gets me in the mood more, just putting it in itself. Great. Okay. And, and do you have to like use lube to get it in if you know that's a good question very good questions okay so they come with a tiny bit of lube on them okay okay but depending on how lubricated the yoni is going to be like you know i'm menopausal so i like to have a little extra lube on the outside of it but if you still have a lot of moisture in your yoni then you probably don't need any on the outside but I would put a little bit of lube in my hands and then rub it on the outside of the condom before I put it in. Okay. And then I would also drip in a little extra lube down inside of it. Now you have to think about like, I'm sure many Yoni owners have had this experience where they've had a long session of intercourse and they start to get sore the next day. You're like, oh, I'm sore, right? And that's because you probably didn't keep adding lube so your own juices kind of got dried up and you know you didn't add more lube. So your yoni walls got sore. So now with the female condom, it's gonna be the opposite of that where the, the female is not going to feel raw no matter how long you have intercourse because there's this lining around the inside of your vagina. So you can have a good long session and never get uh. sore, but the penis owner is going to be getting, the lube is gonna to start to go away if there's been a long session. So one of you is going to have to remember to um, add lube to the penis. If you're going, if you're having sex for a long time, you're going to want to add more lube to the penis from time to time. Okay. And so what is from time to time, every five minutes, every well, 30 minutes? That's a good question, but let me just hold that. So All that's right. why I put a little bit of lube inside before we start. So there's already a little extra inside the condom okay, okay. Yeah. and and there's some on the outside and you can also add it to the penis you know as you're getting it ready to go in so lots of lube, lube is good. almost never have too much lube right okay what was the other question you asked me um well now i'm delightfully distracted because one of our participants is talking about amrita so bear with me um it's uh i, I won't identify their gender even though i know them but they are sharing that in their experience, Amrita and female condoms work fine together. Oh, great. The Amrita squirts out around the female condom. How brilliant. 
a bit redirected and spread out so that I love this, the magic goddess fluid exits the vagina around the outside rim. That's Yum, exactly that's great. What you're saying. Of the, you know, the of internal the condom, condom yes. versus mm-hmm. a more specific single. This is so technical. I love, <laughs> I love it. our collaboration here. <laughs> versus a more specific single direction stream of squirt or squirts and i love it given that you're an open relationship coach that there's so much about you know squirt or squirts either individual partner or multiple partners um this is great thank you so much for that thank you so remember what your other question was when i was talking about the loop Oh, you said how often do you add lube? Okay. Oh, yes. Is it like every so, 10? Because you said often. No, typically whenever the penis comes out, like you're changing positions. Okay. okay. So I would usually say like, hey, um, do you need more lube? Or sometimes the man's like into it and he doesn't even realize he needs more lube. Okay. Uh. So I, I'd say, here, and because I have so much experience using it, usually men, unless they're a longtime lover, don't have as much experience so i would say like hey let me add more lube for you and he'd be like okay <laughs> he's, he's like right in it in it you know like we're just changing positions and i would just add more lube so anytime the penis comes out is a good time to add a little bit more everything is better with more lube <laughs> right. now sorry to keep interrupting your flow but um in neo tantra we tend to use or maybe it's just me I know it's not just me, but I really like using coconut oil on the body. But depending on what your condoms are made out of, you have to be very mindful. So do you know what um, material? The- Thank you for that question. This, that was a softball. Okay. So okay. I used to say that there are 13 reasons why female condoms are superior to male condoms. Okay. But I had to change it to 12. And you know why? because they changed what they're made out of. (gasps) So FCs used to be made out of polyurethane and you could use coconut oil with them. So I used to say, you can use coconut oil with these and you can't use them with male condoms. But now the FC2 is made out of latex. So you can't use oils with it. So that's disappointing. Okay. Okay. But if you're using OG condoms, like regular condoms, as long as they polyurethane, it's okay too. I don't know of any polyurethane male condoms. There's some sheepskin condoms. You might be able okay. to use oil with those, but latex and oil don't go together. Yeah, do not disintegrate, right? I've actually, believe it or not, I'm that geeky. I have tested it out. Not, not during actual sex, but like. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you asked that question. There's a question there. Are there any latex-free internal condoms? And so when I, so I was surprised as I was preparing for this, I learned that they've changed what they make the condoms out of and they make them out of some different form or less latex or something. You'll have to research that. I can't remember what it was exactly, but they said that people who have latex allergies are not bothered by this because of whether it's less latex or a different kind of latex, but there's some reason why latex allergies don't tend to be aggravated by whatever they're using. Huh. Good to know. Good to know. A little bit of homework for those that are listening in. So I believe we've made it to number three. Okay. So um, we were talking about um, how the wall of the vagina gets covered by the condom. Okay. The wall or the outside? the walls of the inside of the vagina are covered by the condom. Okay. The condoms inside the vagina. So your walls are lined with the female condom. Okay. So that is also really good for menopausal women, women who are no longer bleeding. The longer women go without having menstrual periods, the more, the less estrogen they have, unless they're taking estrogen supplements, um, the less and less estrogen they're producing. And so there's less and less natural moisture and fluids in the yoni. So over time, unless they're taking either suppositories of estrogen or using the estrogen patch or some other way of adding estrogen, and even those that are taking a little bit of estrogen can still have this happen where where the tissues become thinner and thinner as we age. 
And so intercourse can be painful, especially longer periods. And I've talked to many women who feel very sad because they, they love, you know, they might be in a long-term marriage and they love their husband and they really want to have intercourse. They miss the, the connection and the intimacy and the bonding that that creates, but it's just painful and, and they don't like it anymore and they don't want to not like it anymore. So mm-hmm. even though they may be married in a monogamous relationship, I still recommend using the female condom because it takes away that rubbing and the pain of the thinning walls without enough lube, right? So that can actually save a monogamous marriage um, when that happens to a woman. So that's a really excellent. Great. So it sounds like another layer of protection between her sensitive yoni walls. Yes. And the friction. Exactly. That's happening. Ah, that is good. Learning so much from you soon. Right. (laughs) So it's excellent for menopausal women. Um, so I don't know how many we're on now. We have here, done but... four. I am <laughs> doing my best to do my job. I think there's you. more. There's been more than four. Um, uh, but we'll we'll make sure we get them all by the end. Okay. Um, okay, so we talked about how it lays down over the outside of the vaginal opening and kind of covers most of the vulva. So if you think about a male condom, you know, man puts it over the tip of his condom, it rolls down about maybe two thirds of the way down the penis. Tip of his cock, right? Not the tip of tip his, of his cock, yeah. yeah. And then the condom rolls down to about two thirds of the way down his penis, right? For an average size penis. It's not- like, I make him go further down, but anyway. If, yeah, and depending on the size of the penis. <laughs> but usually when they've been used, they're, they start to roll up a little. So there's a lot, a, a certain amount, anywhere from like a quarter of an inch to- an inch or more of the base of the penis that doesn't have a condom covering it, okay? And then the balls of the man and and the whole area around there is not, the whole area that's like touching the woman's vulva is not covered with anything. Right. It's really just to catch semen is really all the main purpose of it. Maybe it protects you a little bit from skin STIs, but it's mostly just to keep you from getting pregnant and from eight. It's great for not contracting um, uh, HIV, HIV because that comes through the fluids. So it's really male condoms are really just good for preventing fluid exchange. Female condoms prevent fluid exchange, reduce the amount of fluid exchange, and also reduce the chances of skin to skin contact where you can, uh, you can contract um, HSV, herpes simplex virus from skin to skin contact. So if you're really careful, you cannot have any skin to skin contact at all using a female condom. Mm, very, very great little. great for yeah. ethically non-monogamous people, right? Correct, right. Because that's a big debate around her right. being. Now you can contract HSV from navel to mid thigh. So sometimes it can be contracted from other parts of the skin. But the majority of the contraction, I think, is more on the genitalia. So it, it just reduces the chances. It, there's no surefire way of never being exposed to it unless you have one lover your whole life and you never touch anybody else. Well, this is why they call it safer sex. Safer, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, safer sex. Yeah. But I also like that if I'm thinking about... Um, having a hard time time this evening saying getting fucked in the ass but if you are (laughs) using it i'm really enjoying my evening with you (laughs) and all these wonderful people who were there you might notice i've got a little a, a little darker shade of red now but anyway um for people that are into anal sex for some people that's their primary way of having um sex uh, it actually also, I imagine, can help with STIs because it's also still covering a, a greater surface area. So it's not just for yes, people having uh, sex. It's with people great with for anal sex. So I'll give you some exciting things about anal sex. But before we go into this really racy part, I just want to share one more thing about the benefits of how it lays down over the vagina area. Okay. She's making this, us wait for the anal I'm making sex you part. wait for the yeah. anal sex. Okay. I'm making you beg for it. All right. So um, this is how I started using the female condom in the first place, because I started getting urinary tract infections from male condoms. Don't ask me why, 
but 100% of the time I would get a UTI. So there was something, I don't know if it was the latex or it was just the way it rubs and pushes the bacteria up into my urethra, but I was just having chronic UTIs and I couldn't get rid of them. And I thought, well, I'm never going to be able to have sex again, unless it's a long-term fluid bonded lover, you know? And so then somebody must have mentioned to me, I don't really remember because this was like 20 years ago, but somebody must have mentioned to me maybe 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah, probably 15, 16 years ago. Somebody mentioned that the female condom to me. So that changed my whole sex life because it lays down over the urethra. It's, it's a barrier between the penis and the urethra. So no matter how much bacteria is getting pushed up from the vagina, it's getting you know, covered by the condom. It's protected. So that's awesome. And so I would use that even with a fluid bonded lover, if I was feeling, cause I, I do have, you know, chronic UTIs over the years and I can kind of get a sense of like, I'm at risk for one right now. I might be doing some prevention stuff. So even if I have a fluid bonded lover, I might say, Hey, let's use a female condom today because, you know, I'm feeling like I'm on the verge of getting UTI. So it's great for that. Okay. Excellent. So that's are you good. ready for Thank some you. anal sex talk now, Caroline? <laughs> I think this is our most playful conversation ever. And I'm feeling so shy talking about all things anal. But yes, please go ahead. Okay. So it was the it was the gay men who really taught us that this can be used for anal sex too. You know, it was designed for a vagina, but then they said, hey, we get to use this too. So that's why we call it the internal condom now, because it's not just for pussies. <laughs> that that's a bumper sticker. The internal condom not just for pussies. <laughs> I should buy stock in this company, you know? Um, okay. So what you do, if you want to have anal sex with a, with an internal condom is you take out that inside ring. It's, it's not in there. It's not part and part of the condom. It's loose in there. It's just tight in there. So you can just reach in and pull that internal ring out, just toss it away. And now you've got an external ring right at the, the end of it, where the beginning of the condom is. And then you've just got this kind of plastic bag, okay? So, so again, lots of lube on the outside, especially for anal sex, put lots of lube on the outside of the condom, a little bit of lube inside. And then the person who's going to be receiving anal sex, I would recommend that they just take their finger on the outside of the condom and just push it in as far as you're able to. Ooh. You know, even if it's just a little bit, because sometimes until you're actually engaged in sex, you don't really want to put your finger in too, too far. Calm. Yeah, but it's okay if a lot of the condom is hanging out at first, as long as a good section of it, a couple inches of it is in. And then you, you guide the penis. And so usually like doggy style is really good because you can reach under and like guide the penis into the condom, okay? <laughs> <laughs> is your fan on over there? Might have to add on a second one. It's getting hot in here. Anybody else noticing that? If anybody else is getting turned on that's joining us live, if you're brave enough, you can either send me a personal message or put it in the chat so that I don't have to be feeling shy all by myself. Okay. So you're, so you're reaching underneath and you're guiding the penis. One hand is holding the condom open and the other is yeah. like guiding the penis in so it goes in the middle of it. Okay, once the penis is a little hang bit- on, Hang on, slow down, slow down. Is this just for the anal part? I'm talking about the anal sex, yeah. So hang so, on, you have to have your fingers opening the condom. Okay, so the condom, a lot of it's hanging out. Okay, because yes. you, unless you're like, you have anal sex all the time and you could totally stick your finger all the way in, which maybe, you know, some gay men- I know people that can do that, it. but yeah. it's not me. But yeah. for me, I just put it in a little bit. <laughs> okay. Okay, and then- um, I'm reaching down underneath me, underneath myself in doggy style and reaching back and I'm holding the condom because it's, it's just kind of hanging there. And so I'm holding it with one hand to make sure that the opening stays open. Oh, I see the opening on the outside. On the outside of the condom. Oh, sorry. I okay, was totally with, misunderstanding. And you. with the other hand, I'm reaching under and feeling where the penis is and kind of guiding it in. So it goes in to the middle, okay? And once, once I feel it starting to go inside my body, then I tell my partner, 
okay go ahead now okay so then he can start thrusting now he he needs to be pretty hard because this is not a quick and easy thing so this might be a good thing to do on the first round of sex and maybe not the second or third round mm -hmm. when when the penis owner is more likely to be really hard so um so once once he's in and you say okay you can go now the penis will push the condom the rest of the way in, okay? So you nice. didn't have to push it all the way in with your finger. The penis will push it in. And that ring will keep it there in place, okay? So now the fucking begins, okay? <laughs> and I know there's a lot of questions there, but I just want to say one more thing before okay. we get to the questions, okay? Yeah. And this, this is going to get you really hot and bothered, Caroline. Ah. So so i have i get out two condoms if i'm going to have anal sex i get out two oh. condoms i put one in my yoni and one one in my pussy and one in my ass <laughs> oh oh yeah okay Ooh. so so if we're having anal sex and the man is like you know the penis owner is like really thrusting and having a good old time and i'm like enough anal sex i i'm kind of at my limit yeah. here i'm out i just flip over and the condom's already there in my pussy and he just hardly has to miss a beat and he can just keep going <laughs> that's great and it's also good for you know most guys after about 45 start having a hard time maintaining their erection so then they literally don't don't have to skip a beat and they yes exactly together right <laughs> so that's what i wanted to tell you about anal sex so what were some of the questions that came in about okay that? i'm it's really fun because i'm getting turned on by what you're saying and it's still um and then the participants are having lovely chats and I'm, I'm not using names just to be mindful around confidentiality so we have one participant saying that oh this is a great tip just because we're on the subject of anal my sweetie by the way is going to be so happy i'm gonna this is how i'm gonna make sure he watches this i'll be like it we talk about anal sex anyway um so there is a penis owner that is commenting penis owner is a person that happens to have a penis <laughs> that is saying that in the experience for anal um only oh one only needs to place the internal condom without the inner ring as you said onto the penis and oh. then especially if it's erect then you can just insert oh that's a great tip isn't that yeah. a good tip thank yes. you so yes. much for that learning and community here <laughs> um that's great and then there was another question this was first there was a comment that i thought was really cute so the person said I'm trying to see it sorry oh and because you were talking about one hand puts it in your yoni and then the other hand holds it or if you're putting it in your ass one ha one hand puts it in the ass and the other hand holds it open and the person said i love this and then the third hand is balancing on the bed right because it's starting to sound like gymnastic. <laughs> i love that anyway i think with some practice is what you're saying it's just going to get easier and easier right yeah and the question was, can't the penis owner help to guide their own penis in? Which is kind of what, I mean, they could really, right? If they're experienced using it, then yes. Um, but so often I've had, because I go to play parties and I, I'm an ethical slut, you know, I, I'm with men who've never used it. So I'm just kind of helping them along. Okay, that's, so it can be a partnership I'm, to support each other. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I'm just reading what's here. Bear with me one second. Getting some private messages too. Oh, so um, this particular person is saying, and, and they happen to be in a lot of sex positive communities. So um, it can work quite well, even with a semi erect penis. Well, that's, and, let me get to that. That's okay. That's Good. Thanks. Okay. So um, I think you and I both date men that are like over 60, you know, even sometimes over 50. It's not a hard and fast rule, but I tend to date men a lot older than me. So yeah. yeah so, you know, unless they're taking Viagra or one of those kinds of medications, they don't get as hard and easy and long as they did when they were younger. 
So the female condom is great for that because the man doesn't have to be hard. Like we said earlier, you can put it in ahead of time and um, you know, whenever he's ready. So, and also I think what this person is saying is the, the penis doesn't ever have to get super hard. Um, even when it's a little bit soft because the female condom is just kind of laying there open, ready to go, <laughs> you know, you can just kind of like do stuffing. Like you can just kind of push it in there and maybe once it's in, it'll get a little harder. So yeah, you can play with the penis at very different levels of hardness. Oh, so I'm hearing you say, I, I like to use the term soft on when soft you know, on fl yes. flaccid pe penis and then hard on, but you're saying with a, semi is what i've heard yeah call it. So it sounds yes. like a semi truck to me but anyway um sorry i'm trying to edit all the things going on in my brain which are a little too rude for youtube um which this will eventually be on i think um sorry people are messaging me so fast just asking and this is this is my biggest fear too so i'm actually really glad it's being brought up like what about them missing? Because that's my fear that they would that they would miss. And I'm sorry, I'm having a very hard missing what, Caroline? So the person is saying, what is the difficulty? Oh, what is difficult for an inexperienced user? I consider myself an inexperienced internal condom user about making sure that the partner's penis, if they have one is going inside the ring, the outside ring, versus uh -huh. missing it. Can uh -huh. you remind us how to do yeah. that? Yeah, well, it's just, see, this. my list here is why I think the internal condoms are superior to OG condoms, original condoms. Um, both, kinds of, both kinds of condoms, you have to be aware of where it is while you're using it. You can't just be oblivious and just like, oh, you know, You've got to kind of be conscious, like where is the condom right now, particularly when you're having intercourse and then and then there's a pullout. OK, you want to be aware when you go back in where the condom is for both kinds of condoms. That's no different. So with the with the internal condom, you just want to be aware if there's been a pullout that the condom goes back in the middle. That's all. OK, That's and so it sounds like you've never really had these problems. It's a huge condom. It's, it's laying out, laying there over your whole outside of your vagina. Almost almost all of your vulva is covered by it. OK, and so, you know, the I mean, maybe if the person was vision impaired, but if their vision is fully working, they can see where where the middle of it is pretty easily. And you can feel it on your own body. You can feel where the ring is and make sure that the condom's going in the middle of it. Sorry, I'm laughing because um, a community that a number of us are in, uh, that I'm not gonna name, but um, that has temple space at some of their longer events. Um, I remember in, a, in one very dimly lit night, there were just candles and they had all the supplies laid out next to the bed and we reached for the lube. It was the fucking hand sanitizer. Now, let me tell you, as the person on the receiving end of that, this was no bueno. This was not good. So really make sure. The next time that I played in that space, I removed the hand sanitizer from within hand's reach. because. So yes, you, you, you don't want to mix the lube with the hand sanitizer. That's correct. A hundred percent. You do. It yes, I've heard of that happening before. Another. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're down to the last few ones. And um, I want to talk about a real, my favorite, one of my favorite parts <laughs> is that I put the condom in while I'm giving a blowjob. Oh, now do tell about that. <laughs> okay, so remember how I, I was explaining before, I'm on my knees, I'm reaching in and I'm kind of getting turned on because I'm relaxing my vagina and pushing it up underneath the pubic bone. And, you know, it's kind of rubbing my fingers, kind of rubbing my G spot while I'm doing that. I'm doing that while I'm giving a blowjob. Okay. So I'm on my knees. I'm giving the blowjob. And over time, I don't have to look at what I'm doing. I, my right. hands just know where to go. So I, you know, I'm, I'm even like kind of grabbing some lube and putting it onto the side and like doing this while I'm giving the blowjob. So now the penis owner is very hard 
the right. condom is in and boom, we go. <laughs> oh, I'm really impressed. This is why I've invited you on. You really are an expert. I'm not sure I'm <laughs> going to try that on my first try. <laughs> but um, I do know when I, because I've mostly used, uh, you know, regular condoms that fit over the penis. And that's actually a trick that I use. I give head. Make sure they're nice and hard. And normally I actually have the condom all unwrapped, ready to right. go, everything right. ready to go. Yes. And then you go, see my visual aid. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> having so much fun with you. Um, what is it? 13 days now until my city arrives. Anyway, <laughs> the mouth is engaged on the lingam or what? It, yeah, on the lingam. And then all you have to do is reach over and slide it on and go in. So yeah. it reduces the time because I notice with people that have a hard time maintaining their erections, it can get really stressful. Even 30 seconds, 30 seconds is a long 30 seconds if you're rearing to go. So right. now people have two ways to keep themselves um, up for the action. Well, but I the love this owner move. is lucky enough to have an expert like you or I but, but in real life, most of the time people are fiddling with the condom. They, they didn't, they, they haven't really talked about it ahead of time that much. They aren't, weren't even sure they were going to have sex. And so the penis owner's hard. And then they're like, where's that condom? Oh, let's tear it open. Oh, which side do we put it on? Is it this side? Where's yeah. the light? Uh, you know, yeah. that time, he's totally lost his erection. That is not a great idea. Especially <laughs> if you already know for those watching, like if you already know, because penis owners understandably because their arousal is showing on the outside like that's a lot of pressure yes so if we as the partners can be as supportive and mm -hmm. offer as much inspiration mm -hmm. as possible then where their attention is is on their yes. turn on not on oh, am i hard enough am i getting this right where's yeah. the condom? Where's so the if, the, if the condom is inside the yoni and the man's receiving a blowjob, he can just be totally in pleasure and not even be thinking about it. While I'm putting it in, he does not even know what I'm doing, you know? He's just laying back and receiving the pleasure. Next thing you know, I'm sitting on him. And he's like, wait, where's the condom, you know? Oh, right. it's already, you know? It's oh. just, just, the transition is so smooth. And for him, it just feels really natural. Amazing. Thank you. And it's been fun for me because I enjoy giving blowjobs. So. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> oh God, we've got more people raising hands. That's awesome. Thank you so much for joining in our unofficial poll here. <laughs> wow. So um, I just want to double check before we start opening up uh, shortly to more questions that we, I have, made, uh, we didn't skip any of your uh, your tips because I I have two more on my okay. list of 12. Okay. Great, please continue. We've gone down to the last two. Okay, so I'll la leave, the, leave the super yummy one for last. So this is the less yummy one. These are free. Well, the downside is that the manufacturers couldn't make enough money selling these in drugstores. People just didn't understand them because they didn't have me to explain about blowjobs, you know? <laughs> they needed me on their commercials. But oh. anyway, so people didn't understand them. They weren't really getting bought purchased enough and so as a business model the owners decided to make them prescription that way with they could be part of the whole medical stupid medical system and get you know money charging more for them because insurance covers them now so they're free if you have an aca plan if you have a health insurance plan that's part of the aca or obamacare um okay. they're free oh okay. aca affordable care act, act. yeah Take if you have plan. a health plan that's part of that, you just go to your doctor and you get a prescription for the for the FC2, it's called. And then um, you just go to your drugstore and you get you get them free. No copayment. Oh, great. Free. Yeah, that's amazing. And I think as we were prepping for this, you were also saying that you can get them for free at the clinic. Lots right, of the yeah, clinics have them and clinics love to give them out They They just they'll give you like a whole bag of all different kinds of condoms and lube samples. So most Planned Parenthoods or any kind of like clinics, particularly in more liberal states, you know. Um, yes. Whenever I go and get my STI test done, I'm going to give you a goodie bag. Yeah. So you can well, usually get a good plan, right? You're right yeah. there. And then 
you know, they want to keep everybody as safe as possible. Okay, so you're ready for the final 12th reason why? My like Yoni just did this, so I'd, I'd say yeah. yes. The, and like yeah. David Letterman. And the 12th reason why the internal condom is superior to the original condom is, drum roll please, they are great for female, male, female threesomes. Sorry, two, say that again slowly for me because I want to track it. Two women and a man having a threesome. Okay? okay. So each woman puts a female condom in, yes. leaves it there, and the penis owner can go back and forth without having to change his condom. This is great. And then there's actually much more safer sex happening, right? Yes, because exactly. there's no fluid exchange um, between. Oh, anybody. and people are freaking out about this. It was good. You saved it to love. Um, I, I know a lot of people that are going to be really, really happy about the <laughs> fact that you suggested it. And, and it doesn't even have to be two women and a man. It could just be two recipients yeah. of intercourse, yeah. right? Yeah. Two people who are receiving intercourse, one person giving. It's so right. much easier that way. Oh, yes. It doesn't matter again which orifice. Women are more available if you consent to that. Um, Another question that's just popped in. I love. I'm loving all the questions. Um, are the female condoms covered by Medicare? Do you know? Do you happen to know that? I have no idea. Yeah, I also don't know. You could ask your primary care physician, and I'm uh -huh. sure they would know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but more um, more research. So in a moment. Um, we're going to open it up if people want to ask. I know you've been great about asking on the chat, but if people actually want to ask questions live, we'll make some time for that. But I know that Simati has an exciting offering that's coming up this week. So please oh. share with us. Oh, yeah. And so, what you know, if you want to know any downsides to the, you know, are there any downsides? Because I said there's 12 reasons why they're superior are there any reasons why they're inferior so i'll get to that um okay but yes i wanted to share with you that i'm having a um single session holiday sale for my coaching um just next week only from uh tuesday through saturday if you um purchase a single session with me it's half more than half off my normal rate so it's only $85. And in this session, we'll do some great transformative work. I'll take you into anything that's blocking you from really having the ideal relationship scenario that you want. And we'll have, I, I pride myself on the profound transformation that can be made in one session. Um, so I'm going to put my, uh, the link to where you apply on my website, apply for a consultation. And if you purchase this between Tuesday and Saturday of next week, it's only $85. And um, you don't have to have the session during that week. I'll be booking the sessions through the end of this year. But um, that's just when the, the sale is. They need so, to book the session. They, they have to purchase, purchase the session but next week. They can week. book it at a later time. It can be booked through the end of the year. Yeah. That's fantastic. Perfect for the holidays, right? Yes. So whether you use it yourself or whether well, you holidays, you know, that's when relationships can really be strained with meeting family and traveling. Plus the pandemic is still sort of on. <laughs> I guess it's on. It is on. It is not it's officially on. over. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Um, so we have somebody who's been um, with us and geeking out as well. I'm sorry, I'm trying to... Um, chat keeps jumping but just um was sharing with me privately from oh i beg your pardon it's just a little hard to see so i want to be able to read this because it's a little bit technical um caroline if you don't mind just for people who might be listening to this recording later yeah. um my website is sumatisparks.com just like my name s-u-m-a-t-i sparks.com and there's a, a page on there where you can apply for a consultation. So even if you hear this later after the sale is over, feel free to contact me through my website and we can talk about what your needs are. Thanks. Wonderful. And we'll make sure in the, even on YouTube, the description will have all of that information. So um, I, I'm 
unless there's an objection from the person who shared this with me privately, I will share the link um, perhaps afterwards, but it's an article talking about the female condoms being made from nitrile, therefore they're latex free. So the, the FC2 is 100% latex free and the company makes the sheath and the outer ring Sorry, I just can't see as this. I will post the link for everybody, but it sounds like this might deal. So it's not made of latex, according that to that. That is what this is oh, saying. I great. haven't verified this. That must be why it doesn't activate latex allergies. I must have missed that. There we go. I'm just putting the link in there so that great, um, great. people can, we can check it out. After Perfect. It. And I'll. Um, medical for people that are listening to this later, it's medicalnewstoday.com. And then just do a search there for a female internal condom. Excellent. Cool. So yeah, we want to, we've only got um, about 10 minutes left, but you guys have all been amazing. All the folks on this call have been amazing. So if you would like to raise your hand and ask a question, you don't have to do it live. Um, you could just keep typing as you guys have been doing. I've loved, has it been great how they have really added to the discussion? and my turn on um, by adding your questions. So if there's, um, you know, if there's a question, you can raise your, raise your hand. I think we all know how to do that on Zoom by now. Um, or you could still pop it in, the, in the, the chat, but it's been, it's been so fun, even though the, the technical, because I want to be present with you, Sumi, and then I'm getting all these lovely downloads, but it's great to be able to learn from each other as well because, uh, you know, there are some pretty sex positive people on our call too. It takes and a village to work a female condom. <laughs> <laughs> That's got all sorts of other connotations for me that I won't be saying um, <laughs> yes. when this is being recorded. Uh, yes, and now there's a conversation about natural condoms. So I was just looking at my list of, you know, are there any downsides? And um, I think I covered all of these already as we were talking about them. You know, it's a little harder to obtain than the original condoms. You have to get a prescription. There's a learning curve, you know, as you first learn how to do it. Um, and then there's a chance that the penis will go outside if the, you know, we, we talked about that, making sure that it goes in the middle. And then the penis owner will need to reapply lube during a long session the vagina owner won't know if they need lube. So check in every so often and see if the penis needs more lubes. So those were the, the four things, but we kind of already said those as we were talking about the positive things. We did. And I also, um, given that we've talked so much about anal sex, which I was not anticipating as much this evening, but it clearly gets me um, <clears throat> hot and bothered, uh, that you know, with anal in general, you uh you always want to be adding more lube like everything you do add more lube the number one thing that i found with any kind of anal penetration is not enough lube right so i like this that you like add lube to the oh and i side as well. yeah and i didn't say that um, it also makes anal sex way cleaner you know you just right. pull out the female condom and just wrap it up in a, a tissue and throw it away and the penis doesn't have to come in contact with anything Eagle other Eagle. than yummy sex. <laughs> That's a lovely way to put it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, if there aren't any more questions, which it looks like there may not be, why don't we wrap up the official portion of this and we'll just have some time with those that, um, uh, with my patrons that joined us live. So give me just one second.